Hi everybody, it's Jason from the Yahoo and the Torah YouTube channel and Rumble channel and Yahoo and the Torah.net. And it is a lone solo gig today, and I thought the band would be back, but we are still dealing with the adversities of life, trying to figure out things here in these jungles. And we appreciate you guys, and we love you guys, and your family is our family, and our family is your family, and we truly mean that. And we pray for a tremendous amount of you over the course of the years, months and years. You guys have given us prayer requests, and we we pray for you guys, and we truly hope that you will keep us in your prayers as we are those people who believe that the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are the guidelines for life. They are what we should live our life with. They are what we should be bound by. It is what we should be dedicating everything to. And those people are the Torah keepers. And when you find them in Revelations, you find that the Torah keepers are afflicted. That Hasatan definitely wants you and he wants your family and he does not want you serving the law, statutes, serving our creator by following his law, statutes and commandments. And so, guys, with that, um, I will apologize for my dogs. They are always noisy and always loud and there's not much I can do. They're over there eating, so I will go over there and walk with them as they're eating to comfort them as we talk and we discuss and we read this out of the book of Adam and Kawa. And... What we got yesterday was kind of a grim story of how the devil, Hasatan, and his band of demons was able to physically go in and beat Adam and Kawa to death. And this is something that everyone should be aware of, is that the power of Hasatan is real. The power of and the evil of Hasatan is real. And it is his everyday goal and everyday moment to make sure that we are not children of the Most High. And we live in a society, we live in a world right now where the people are, they don't care about the laws of our Creator. They don't, there's no religion out there that focuses on keeping the commandments of our Creator. And so Hasatan isn't after those people because he already has them. He's after the people that keep the Torah. He's after the people that love our Elohim Most High and will dedicate their lives. And so, as we see the power, the enormous power that Hasatan has, it is things that we all need to understand and to understand to the point that we know that the, the powers that be, the, the, the demons, have a power that is, that is real and it is things that can affect all of us. And they're not just trying to infiltrate our hearts, minds, and souls. They're trying to infiltrate everything. And they, they do have power to change into things, apparitions, or things of not just apparitions, but things that look like humans. And so let us continue on and let's see what the wiles and the evil of the devil has for our foremother and forefather today. And this is from chapter 60. Then on the 89th day, Satan came to the cave, clad in a garment of light and gird about with a bright girdle. In his hands was a staff of light, and he looked most awful, but his face was pleasant, and his speech was sweet. He thus transformed himself in order to deceive Adam and Kawa, and to make them come out of the cave, ere they had fulfilled the forty days. For he said within himself, Now that when they had fulfilled the forty days, fasting and praying, Elohim would restore them to their former state. But if he did not do so, he would still be favorable to them. And even if he had not mercy on them, would he yet give them something from the garden? All right. Sorry, everybody. That's just part of the distractions that we have around here. Um, <laughs> for those who don't know, that's, that's my kids on a calm that are miles away that are hunting cows in the middle of a jungle that have run away. And so let us continue on. Um, I got that distraction taken care of. And so again, um, let's go back into four here. <clears throat> For he said within himself, now that when they had fulfilled the 40 days fasting and praying, Elohim would restore them to their former state. But if he did not do so, he would still be favorable to them. And even if he had not mercy on them, would he yet give them something from the garden to comfort them as already twice before? Then Satan drew near the cave in this fair appearance and said, O oh, Adam, rise up, stand up thou and Kawa, and come along with me to a good land. And fear not, I am flesh and bones like you. And at first, I was a creature that Elohim created. And it was so that when he had created me, he placed me in the garden in the north on the border of the world. And he said to me, abide here. And I abode there according to his word. 
neither did I transgress his commandment. Then he made me and made a slumber to come over me, and he brought me thee, O Adam, out of my side. But did did not he make thee abide by me? But Elohim took thee in his divine hand, and placed thee in a garden to the eastward. Then I grieved because of thee, for that while Elohim had taken thee out of my side, he had not let thee abide with me. But Elohim said unto me, Grieve not because of Adam, whom I brought out of thy side. No harm will come to him. For now I have brought out of his side a help me for him, and I have given him joy by, do, by so doing. Then Satan said again, I did not know how it is ye are in this cave, nor anything about this trial that has come upon you until Elohim said to me, Behold, Adam has transgressed. He whom I have taken out of thy side, and Kawa also, whom I have took out of his side, and I have driven them out of the garden. I have made them dwell in a land of sorrow and misery, because they transgressed against me, and have hearkened to Satan. And lo, they are in suffering until this day, the 80th. And I don't know about this time. That is, um, I, the time doesn't seem right, because we know they're in the cave 40 day. They are in the 40th. So I'm not exactly sure what they're, what they're talking about on this. But what you guys can see from this is you guys can see the complete, um, the lies of Hasatan and how he will do whatever it is possible to deceive you and to make you fall out of the eyes of our creator. And it's easy enough to fall out of the eyes of our creator by being lawless, by being Torah-less. And so these are the lessons that we are getting from the book of Adam and Eve is that the laws, statutes, and commandments, just like in all scriptures, were always meant to be. They're not something of the old Mosaic days. It's not something that just was uh, for the old people or the Jews. This is something that is for every person of every creed, of every race, of every nation, of every heart, of every mind, of every soul. It is something that if we take and embrace and that we read it, and our creator isn't in a codex, right? You're not going to find him in this 66 book King James version or any kind of codex like this. You'll find him in his writings. And back in the day, they didn't have a compiled book that the Catholics put together and called the Bible. They had scrolls. They had Torah scrolls. And that is what people read out of. And we were never told to go and put together scriptures in a codex that was to make a Bible like it was. It was always individual scrolls. It was individual th themes and topics and things of that nature. And it was the Catholics. And they, they say they put it together by Holy the Holy Spirit and that it was it's the only divine thing. But you have a, you know, it begins in the book of Acts and there is a, you know, it talks about the apostles and then it jumps over to Paul. And then you have a tremendous amount of books of Paul, 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 until you get to where Peter and you have John. And, and so basically people will take all of the readings of Paul and go, well, the law is no more. I don't have to follow the law because our rabbi Paul says so. And essentially they make Paul their Elohim. And so this is what we at this channel are trying to do is trying to get people to find this path, this little itty bitty path, this little itty bitty gate and stay on this because that is the only thing that we can ever save ourselves with is our soul. We can't save ourselves, but we can try to save our souls. And how we would save our souls is by getting in a covenant with our creator. 15. Then Elohim said unto me, Arise, go, with, go to them, and make them come to thy place, and suffer not that Satan come near them and afflict them. For now they are in great misery and lie helpless from hunger. He further said to me, When thou hast taken them to thyself, give them to eat of the tree, fruit of the tree of life, and give them to drink of the water of peace. And clothe them in a garment of light, and restore them to their former state of grace, and leave them not in misery, for they came from thee, but grieve not over them, nor repent of that which has come upon them. But when I heard this, I was sorry, and my heart could not patiently bear it for thy sake, O my child. But O Adam, when I heard the name of Satan, I was afraid, and I said within myself, I will not come out, lest he ensnare me as he did my children, Adam and Kawa. And, he, and I said, O oh, Elohim, when I go to my children, Satan will meet me in the way and war against me as he did against them. Then Elohim said unto me, Fear not, when thou findest him, smite him with the staff that is in thine hand, and be not afraid of him, for thou art of old standing, and he shall not prevail against thee. Then I said, O oh, my Yahuwah, I am old and I cannot go. Send thy messengers to bring them. But Elohim said unto me, Angels, 
or messengers, verily, are not like them, and they will not consent to come with them. But I have chosen thee, because they are thy offspring, and like thee, and will hearken to what thou sayest. Elohim said further to me, If thou hast not strength to walk, I will send a cloud to carry thee, and alight thee at the entrance of their cave. Then the cloud will return and leave thee there. And if they will come with thee, I will send a cloud to carry thee and them. Then he commanded a cloud, and it bare me up, and brought me to you, and then went back. And now, O my children, Adam and Kawa, look at my old gray hairs, and my feeble estate, and at my coming from that distant place. Come, come with me, to a place of rest. Then he began to weep and to sob before Adam and Kawa, and his tears poured upon the earth like water. And when Adam and Kawa raised their eyes and saw his beard and heard his sweet talk, their hearts softened towards him. They hearkened unto him, for they believed he was true. And it seemed to them like that they really were his offspring, when they saw that his face was like their own, and they trusted him. So guys, as you can see, the devil will guile you in tremendous ways. He will do incredible evil things to get you to break your oath. And all he wanted them to do was break their oath to our creator and to bring them out of the cave. Let's continue on 61. Then he took Adam and Kawa by the hand and began to bring them out of the cave. But when they were come a little way out of it, Elohim knew that Satan had overcome them and had brought them out ere the 40 days were ended to take them to some distant place and to destroy them. Then the word of Yahuwah, Elohim, again came and cursed Satan and drove him away from them. And Elohim began to speak to Adam and Kawa, saying to them, What made you come out of the cave unto this place? Then Adam said unto Elohim, Didst thou create a man before us? For when we were in the cave, there suddenly came unto us a good old man who said to us, I am a messenger from Elohim unto you to bring you back to some place of rest. And we did believe, O Elohim, that he was a messenger from thee. And we came out with him and knew not whither we should go with him. Then Elohim said unto Adam, See, that is the father of evil arts, who brought thee and Kawa out of the garden of delights. And now, indeed, when he saw that thou and Kawa were been both joined together in fasting and praying, and that you came not out of the cave before the end of the 40 days, he wished to make your purpose vain, to break your mutual bond, to cut off all hope from you, and to drive you to some place where he might destroy you. Because he was unable to do aught to you, unless he showed himself in the likeness of you. Therefore did he come to you with a face like your own, and began to give you tokens as if they were all true. But I, in my mercy, in mercy, and with a favor I had unto you, did not allow him to destroy you, but I drove him away from you. Now therefore, Adam, take Kawa and return to your cave, and return into it until the morrow of the fortieth day. And when you come out, go towards the eastern gate of the garden. Then Adam and Kawa worshipped Elohim, and praised and blessed him for the deliverance that they had come to them, to them from him. And they returned towards the cave. This happened at eventide of the thirty-ninth day. Then Adam and Kawa stood up, and with great zeal prayed to Elohim to be brought out of, of their want for strength, for their strength had departed from them, through hunger and thirst and prayer. But they watched the whole of that night, praying until morning. Then Adam said unto Kawa, Arise. Let us go towards the eastern gate of the garden, as Elohim told us. And they said their prayers, as they were wont to do every day. And they went out of the cave to go near to the eastern gate of the garden. Then Adam and Kawa stood up and prayed, and besought Elohim to strengthen them, and to send them something to satisfy their hunger. But th when they had ended their prayers, they remained where they were by reason of their failing strength. Then came the word of Elohim, and said unto them, O Adam, rise. Go and bring hither two figs. Then Adam and Kawa arose and went until they drew near to the cave. All right, folks, that is going to seal it for us today. And we hope that you guys are finding some interesting reading out of this. And again, we are those people that are merely trying to help others find their way. And we don't have all the answers for it. And we are definitely not what you would call holy people. Right. A lot of people will say, oh, man, I wish wish we had the same life that Jason had. Guys, we are we fall the same way you guys fall. We all have the same issues. We are in a crazy world. We have crazy incidents that happen to us all the time. And sometimes it feels like we are far from holiness. And it is only by prayer and only by repentance and only by seeking our creator that we're able to find the way forward. 
And the way forward isn't going to be in a 501c3 church. It's not going to be in a church and eating where you're, you're eating pig and you're eating lobster and you're, you're just eating unclean foods and you don't give a darn about what our creator has to say. Everything our creator has to say is of vital importance. The, the, the words in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are extremely important to all of our lives. And with them, you will build strong families. You will build strong relationships. You will be a strong father. You will be a strong mother. You will be a strong sibling, right? This is what we are looking for. We are looking for strength in these days that our creator can depend upon us because he has been so loyal to us that he gave us everything that we need into perfection, he gave us the air that we can breathe, the vision of our sight, the hearing of our ears, the, the thinking of our mind. We have a soul that is, that is not just here for this 120 years we've been assigned, but we have a soul that is set for eternity, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And it is our choice whether we choose the good or we choose the bad. And guys, we hope that from this channel that you will learn something that you will, and don't take it from us. Take it from the scriptures themselves. Take it from where you guys can read the scriptures and that you can see for yourselves what the laws, statutes, and commandments are say. And if you're brand new in this walk, then I suggest you just start reading Genesis and read it as a love letter. Read it as a technical guideline. Read it as a manual for your life and read it as are the greatest things that have ever been given because they are and they will keep us alive. Guys, with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm out.